So we're back in Factorio again. And can you believe it? I still forgot to turn off the in-game music. But I, I do I do remember at some point during this video, just it takes a moment. But that's not important right now, because right now it's factory time and my iron is really low. So I quickly head down to the malls and add electric mining drills to it because uh, I don't know why I didn't do it before, because those are just a good thing to have on the mall since you need so many of them. I head back up and expand the iron mine, and now I have pretty much double the amount of iron being smelted at a time, so that's a hopefully sufficient upgrade. Now you've seen the title and you've seen the thumbnail, so you know the main point of this episode is setting up blue science. So I quickly get to work. Uh, planning out my blue science build in Hellmod, and I pretty quickly realized that I'm going to need to expand oil processing to get the right amount of all the ingredients for it. Fortunately, since we're just using basic oil processing right now, that just means I add a few more refineries and extend the pipes a bit, so it's really not that big a deal. We're already using some of the petroleum that this process makes to make some plastic, but we're going to want to get a little bit more plastic and also start making sulfur as well since both of those are needed in a decent quantity for the blue science that we're going to make. And now with plastic upgraded and sulfur added to the bus, we can start working on that blue science. As you can probably imagine though, blue science is the most complicated science so far, because each science is kinda supposed to be more complicated than the last. Cause you know, game design. Now explaining things is hard, so instead I'm gonna use a glorious, 100% rational graphic to describe it. We have the image. We've got these things. Those things become these things and those things become other things that become blue science. That makes sense? No? Well, too bad, because that's the limit of my explaining capabilities. But after setting up blue science, I can just sit back and watch it fill up right after I remember to finally turn off the game music. Now, during that quick time lapse, you may have noticed these red flashing notices at the bottom of my screen. And, uh, yeah, that's because the biters keep trying to eat through my walls. And they're kind of almost succeeding, which is not good. Even though they're not currently doing a ton of damage per attack, they're doing just enough that over time they will get through. Uh, and especially at this outpost, it could become a problem since I don't really come over here very often, so we're probably gonna want to do something about that. But that can wait for later. And that's because, first things first, I noticed that after setting up blue science, copper has gotten very low. And that's probably because red circuits are just extremely copper hungry. So I get to forget that I have electric mining drills in the mall, and uh, make them by hand, so that I can expand the copper mine. That said, since I do have the copper, I might as well start making red ammo. Uh, putting this on the belt instead of yellow ammo will make the turrets do a lot more damage and mean that hopefully less biting on the walls so I don't have to worry about it as much. But more importantly it's about time that I get to the research slam of the episode since I you know have the blue science set up and everything. Uh, though I do have to stop for a moment just to set up some better power because the old power was not keeping up. But, as colorful as the labs are, they're not that entertaining to just watch run, so let's move on. So, first thing I do after doing the research slam, and still kind of going through it a little bit, is set up some advanced oil processing, because I want power armor. Advanced oil processing is different from basic oil processing, because A, you need water, and B, it's more complicated, because it gives three outputs instead of one. See, instead of just giving you the petroleum that you use for sulfur and plastic, it also gives you heavy oil and light oil, which you need for other products. During this time, I have to make another repair run to the walls, this one being notable because they actually broke a gun turret this time, which is not at all ominous or foreboding. But since that isn't at all an issue that I should be worrying about, clearly, 
I just set up an electric motor area because I really want that power armor, and electric motors are one of the ingredients. However, the not problem by the walls is clearly a problem because I am once again, next to the walls, repairing walls. But it's also clearly not a problem because I just go back to making blue circuits. You know, as, as one does. It, it's probably fine, who needs to worry about the walls? It's not like them breaking would cause a catastrophic incident where the entire base could be destroyed. It's fine. After crafting my power armor and replacing another gun turret that got broken, I make a temporary spot for batteries so I can craft a personal roboport, some personal solar panels, some personal batteries, and also make myself 10 construction robots. Because construction robots are really nice. As an example of the construction bot's greatness, I start setting up these ghosts of gun turrets around the walls, basically doubling it up, and the construction robots help me actually build all of them so that I don't have to do it by hand. And that's why they're so great, because, like, you can automate putting stuff down, and that's great. After all that, and also more nibbles from the biters, I decide I want to fight the biters on their own turf. So I make some poison capsules and a flamethrower, and go to attack some biters, because why not? I then proceed to forget to use the flamethrower and do a mediocre job, because I also didn't bring enough fish. And end up having to drive home, because I failed to even beat the second nest. After returning home, I make a temporary rocket fuel spot that I plan to use to fuel my car, but I kind of forgot most of the time, so it doesn't really get used. I then immediately go out to fight again, and actually remember to use the flamethrower this time, which makes everything infinitely easier. With this newfound confidence, I decide to head back to that nest that kind of beat me up last time to get my sweet, sweet revenge. However, I forget to bring fish again, and uh, proceed to immediately lose again. And so with combat clearly not suiting me in the moment, I decide to head back to the factory and set up some solar panel and accumulator production at the bottom of the base. Solar panels and accumulators will be used for clean power, which should help reduce spider attacks, which should be nice. After coming back the next day, I immediately get to work expanding my walls down south, trying to get myself a bit more room to work. I end up more than doubling the space within my walls just with this downward expansion, and I end up removing the obsolete wall, but for some reason I don't get rid of the turrets. I then grab some of the solar panels that I had just automated and make a small solar panel area, just to sort of get the idea down, and while it isn't perfect since I believe there should be more accumulators than I have, it works so it can't be that bad, right? But since I'm gonna want this solar area to be a lot bigger, and also I see a nice iron patch over that direction, I start expanding the wall east now, clearing out a nest while I'm at it via turret spam, because uh, it's really effective to turret spam, and I do not know why I haven't been doing this. But after this another extremely large expansion, and expanding the solar panels a bit, I start dismantling the malls, leaving only one warehouse on each of them, just to store all the stuff that was in them, and that's because I'm getting ready to dismantle the base, but don't, don't worry about that too much. Before I address the words that just came out of my mouth, I do set up a little buffer to store up a bunch of the red ammo that I've been making, just so that I have a buffer for when the base turns off for some reason. That reason being the dismantling. See, I could make this base a lot better, but uh, it's going to be hard to do without dismantling it, so I'm just going to dismantle it and start again. And uh, this is kind of what that looked like. With that, we can now start all over again. Though, to be fair, we have a bunch of the resources we made the base with, and uh, all the research, so it's not as much of a reset as the words that I am saying make it sound like. It's just a sort of soft reboot to make it better this time. To start by making the mines again, first starting with the patches that I had before, 
covering all of them completely this time instead of just covering the parts that were easy to access. I also make an iron mine at the patch I enveloped far to the east, which is huge, but it makes a lot of iron, which is nice. I then set up the iron, steel, and copper furnace stacks, which are pretty nice and make a good amount. I uh, then pause OB OBS uh, and forget to resume it. So uh, now we have stone bricks, stone, coal, plastic, and sulfur finished as well. Uh, yeah. Next, I reset up the sciences that we had made in the old base because those are kind of important. Starting with red, then green, then black, then blue. And we're not going to talk about how I cut off the last couple assemblers on the green science and its time lapse. Uh, we're just going to pretend that that did not happen. I set up the lab, since I haven't done that yet, and run the storage strongbox storehouse warehouse researches since I apparently hadn't done that yet, and then it's time to decide which science to go for next, between utility and production. Despite the fact that it is a bit more complicated, I did end up deciding to go for the utility science first, since I think A, it'll make for a better viewing experience, and B, it just gives me better stuff overall because it gives me logistic system and logistic system is really good. But we'll get to that next time because for now, that's everything. I was considering setting up the new mall here, but I think I'm gonna save that for next video and maybe do it as a bot mall, but we'll just have to see. So for now, that's gonna be all from me today and hopefully I'll be back soon, because I am kinda hoping to get this series finished by the time the DLC comes out. Uh, and I know what you're saying, with your upload schedule, there's no way that's happening, and you're probably right. But, I'm gonna try. So, for now, I'll see you next time, and farewell.